A koala is a marsupial, not a bear. Even though it sounds cute to call them a koala bear, they're actually a marsupial, which means they have their babies in a pouch. And they're only found in Australia, one of our most beautiful, iconic species. The threats to koalas are that their habitat is being diminished and fragmented. And then what happens to a koala once its trees cut down is that they can get run over by a car, get eaten by a dog, and then often they get very sick and so they have a lot of diseases. So the protection of their habitat solves all those problems. Established in 1986, the Australian Koala Foundation keyed its initial efforts on finding a cure for chlamydia, an infectious disease that was severely impacting koala populations. It was later found that habitat destruction was the primary reason for the decline in koala populations, so the Foundation shifted its priorities to mapping areas critical to koala survival, creating a detailed and comprehensive koala habitat atlas. Okay, it's just showing the different types of vegetation around the Redland Shire area within Brisbane. The light green areas are scattered vegetation, the mid green is medium vegetation, and the dark green is dense vegetation. So this is just showing the different soil landscapes and shaded in various colours. Similarly for geology, same type of thing. So the result of all these maps that we've just seen is this final koala habitat map. Brush fires are a major threat to koalas, not only killing them directly, but also destroying critical habitat. Sand mining for heavy minerals requires the removal of thousands of trees and alters forever potential koala habitat. The building of roads leads to more cars and every year many koalas are hit and killed as they attempt to cross roadways. And finally, human habitation takes a huge toll on these animals as forest areas are cleared for housing projects, which also bring with it more cars and dogs, direct threats to koalas as they move on the ground from tree to tree. Mapping critical koala habitat centers not just on the forest in general, but individual trees used by the animals as well. In a combined and ongoing effort of the Australian Koala Foundation and the San Diego Zoo, biologists set out on a two-week expedition into rugged koala country to collect information that will add to the koala habitat atlas. Fifteen meters. Make sure you look above, sort of where branches and things are going to be brushing around. It is important to identify every tree that a koala has chosen as its home, both by looking for claw marks left as the animals climb the trunk and by finding fecal pellets that have fallen to the base of the tree. This side of the tree, or this particular part of the tree, 
is pulled by the sharp claws of the animal time and time again as it's visited this tree. And when you sort of stand back from this tree and you see it from a distance and you have a practiced eye, what you say is, this is a home range tree for a koala. This is a very important tree for the koala that owns this piece of country. To date, the foundation has mapped more than a thousand field sites. The goal is to work with landowners of koala habitat to protect the animals and to have passed a national koala act to formalize koala protection. Mapping is critical, but it is very hard work, requiring a dedication that not just anyone can commit to. I've worked with a great deal of, a great many people from very different backgrounds, and I sort of um, tend to sit back and watch, and I see them get bored, and I see them get tired and hot, and mosquito bitten and tick ridden and sweaty, and um, I sort of see the interest flag, and I think um, what's been good about the last two weeks here is not only have we accomplished a great deal of work, but it's been accomplished with an enthusiasm that I haven't seen before. The beginning, the first th three days, was the worst. <laughs> it was the hardest work. We thought, there's no way we're going to make it through two weeks of this. But, um, you know, now we've actually gotten used to the work, and we go out there, and we're all gung-ho. It's like, OK, let's go down there and search for our pellets, and, um, and we're ready to go on the next site, because I think we're so enthused about the project now that, um, and actually understanding the whole project now, we're really looking forward to it. And it's going to be really sad when we have to go home. It's my hope that the Koala Habitat Atlas is going to be a, a map that I can give to the local mayor and the local council and say, this is how you can, you can protect koalas. You could go in there and say, this is koala habitat, this koala's in there, please don't put a road or a house or a dog near them. And indeed, we might even be able to find areas that used to be good koala habitat and maybe koalas were burnt out in fires and we could restock them with nice healthy koalas and let them start their lives again. It's very difficult to protect koala habitat unless you have the support of the landholders. So a National Koala Act will protect the koala but it'll also make sure that the landholder is given all sorts of tax incentives or encourage them to protect the trees and the koalas on their property. Seems so simple, but it's never really been done before.